Hey folks, welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danae. I am a gardener, herbalist, and in general nature enthusiast. And I love teaching folks all about the edible and medicinal plants found growing right in your own backyard. And today we are discussing the marvelous, the magnificent, the mighty, and medicinal mullen. Mullen is a giant in the world of herbal medicine, as well as in your own backyard and out in nature. If you've ever seen these plants seemingly pop up out of nowhere along sunny paths, roadsides, highways, or even in your own backyard, then you've likely discovered a mullen plant and you're so lucky. Mullen has been used traditionally in herbal medicine for many years, and many of its uses are being backed by scientific research today. So perhaps you've already heard of some of Mullen's uses as a lung tonic um, for ear infections or even just as nature's soft fuzzy toilet paper. However you may be familiar with Mullen, there are so many more uses for this plant. I'm even discovering new uses for it every time I pick up a book and do more research on this wonderful plant. So today we are going to try to cover as many of those uses as possible. There are many species of mullen, though the two used most frequently in herbal medicine are common mullen and great mullen, verbascum thapsus and verbascum giganteum. We humans have a very long history with mullen. Roman soldiers would dip the flowering stalks in suet or tallow to make torches. Indigenous Americans lined their shoes with mullen leaves to help keep out the cold and early settlers would use the crushed seeds to paralyze fish in slow-moving bodies of water, making for an easier catch. Fortunately for us, the seeds are completely safe for human use. Mullen is a delight to behold in its first and second years of growth. A biennial, mullen grows low to the ground in its first year, producing a basal rosette of soft fuzzy leaves similar to and often confused with lamb's ear. In the second year, mullen shoots up growing as much as 10 feet tall in the right conditions. And yes, this does seem to happen overnight. I've seen a mullen grow as much as six inches a day. This impressive plant always adds interest to my garden, and every year I'm excited to see where it will pop up next. Now let's talk about those medicinal uses. Mullen has primarily cooling, moistening energetics with some astringent qualities. It is a plant that exudes calmness and tranquility, a truly friendly giant. The leaves and flowers, and occasionally the roots, are used medicinally, and their uses are extensive, covering a range of skin conditions like hemorrhoids, cysts, ulcers, and burns, as well as respiratory and digestive issues like the common cold, tonsillitis, asthma, bronchitis, gallstones, toothache, and inflammation of the digestive and toxin-purifying organs. Let's look at how mullen helps with respiratory conditions, one of the most common uses for mullen in herbal remedies. This herb is a useful helper and can even be harvested fresh up to early winter and a few months later in early spring. Here's a baby mullen in early spring growing next to a burdock plant. Both have soft fuzzy leaves as part of their description when identifying, but you can easily tell the difference side by side. Mullen is an expectorant, meaning that it helps the body to break up and expel mucus. It also contains mucilaginous chemicals, which help to soothe the throat and reduce excessive coughing, making it easier to breathe when sick. Mullen is antiviral, containing arsalic acid and three key flavonoids known to help stop viruses from reproducing, including the viruses responsible for herpes simplex, influenza, and COVID-19. According to researchers, flavonoids are not well absorbed by the body when taken orally, but have a better chance of being absorbed through the membranes of the nose. Scientists suggest an oral spray to better obtain the benefits of flavonoids, which fits well with many of the traditional remedies using mullen, where one inhales the steam of fresh mullen tea for relief. 
In fact, I've used mullein tea made from distilled water in a neti pot to great effect. However, you should make sure that you strain the tea well to remove the fine hairs as they are known to cause irritation. Mullein is a great plant for herbalism skeptics. In fact, um, a few years ago when I really started getting into herbal medicine and trying to apply it to our daily lives, my husband was constantly worried about me poisoning him with some of my foraged plants. And one year he got really sick with COVID and had this terribly um, inflamed sinuses. Um, his sinuses were very red and sore and he was producing almost no mucus. And after um, using over-the-counter medications and really not getting much relief, I finally convinced him to try a cup of mullein tea, hearing about its expectorant qualities and really wanting to put that to the test. So he finally gave in and drank a little bit of this tea. And within about 15 minutes, his sinuses were pouring like a fountain. And it was such a relief for him that um, he continued to ask for more mullein tea throughout the course of his illness, which was about a week. So this was his first time trying a plant when over-the-counter medicines failed and he found that it worked and it really turned him from a skeptic into a believer. Since then, we have been incorporating mullein into our cough, flu, and sinus remedies. So if you've watched one of my recent videos on my favorite herbal cough syrup remedy that also includes mullein in it, it's three herbs which all work together to create a, a cough medicine that helps with hot, dry coughs, helping your body to um, produce mucus and provide um, inflammation relief. I also enjoy using mullein leaf in any of my anti-inflammatory tea mixes. Um, I also like to use the mullein tincture. What's interesting about mullein tincture, I use or I have been using a hundred proof vodka for, for most of my tinctures and depending on what herb it is, so if it's like creeping charlie or yarrow or hmm, white whorehound, these are very strongly bitter herbs and sometimes astringent herbs and they make a very intense tincture that can be a little bit harsh on the body, especially if you're already experiencing a hot, dry condition. And what's interesting about the mullein tincture is it really takes the bite out of the alcohol. I don't know what it is about mullein, but I find that my tinctures have a slight sweetness to it and you can almost not even taste the alcohol. I love using mullein tinctures in um, most of my teas. I like to just add a little bit in there because I do struggle with internal inflammation and um, certain immune system flare-ups, especially when I'm stressed or it's very hot outside. Um, so having this on hand is very, very helpful. With autoimmune disorders and severe cases of cold and flu, the body's immune system can overreact, leading to organ damaging and life-threatening inflammation. This overreaction is known as a cytokine storm, and mullein contains chemicals which can help to calm this storm, reducing inflammation and helping the ill to recover faster. Its anti-inflammatory properties are not only useful for respiratory conditions, but other causes of inflammation as well, such as sore muscles, arthritis, rheumatism, hemorrhoids, and even ear infections. The analgesic or pain-relieving qualities of mullein flour make it a popular remedy for earache when infused in olive oil. Add fresh garlic and oregano for an even more potent ear infection remedy that's great for adults and kids. Among other uses, mullein has anti-cancer properties both as a water extract and an ethanol extract and is anti-thelmintic, meaning that it can help to destroy parasitic worms. So in summary, mullein is antiviral, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, expectorant, antispasmodic, analgesic, astringent, anti-cancer, and anti-thelmintic. This is a head-to-toe plant with head-to-toe uses for ear infections and lung support, general hygiene, and even warming the bottoms of your feet. All right, so I hope I've been able to teach you as much as there is to know about mullein. 
like I said, I'm always learning um, something new every time I do research on Mullen. So I probably haven't covered it all, but I hope I've covered enough to convince you that Mullen is a great herb to include into your own apothecaries and perhaps into your own gardens. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, folks.